Kionda. Welcome back to the channel. My name is David, in case you forgot my name, because uh, God knows how long I've posted a, a, a full POV video. Um, it's It's been a hot summer, and I have not been wanting to go shoot street photography because it's been so freaking hot. Triple digits, it, it sucks. Um, but the good news is I'm almost debt free, so that's also kind of why I haven't really been doing a lot of this stuff because I've been focusing more on my freelance and my day job to climb out of debt. That way I um, could start next year completely debt free. And, uh, you know, I've already paid off, I think, more than half of it. So I'm almost there, like, you know, the marathon. I'm starting to see the, 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 the finish line from the marathon. So, yay. Uh, but today we're in uh, Glendale. With the X100V, I've been using this camera a lot more lately, especially because now i got a really cool little sling bag by Alpaca Gear. This isn't sponsored. Um, that fits it perfectly, so it's like, okay, cool, and I can take it everywhere. Um, I still have my X-T3. I also recently just picked up the um, 18 again because I missed that lens. And uh, so I got my street photography kit for this year kind of like figured out. Um, and, you know, like I said, if... Uh, I do miss my X-Pro3, I'm not gonna say I don't, but the X100V kinda like scratches that rangefinder itch when I need it, and it's also small, and I get results like this, which is amazing. Uh, I was actually shooting with the, well, I shot everything raw, and then in post, what I've been doing a lot now is I've been adding the either Astia um, film simulation or classic Chrome, and then I just edit to my liking. And I've been actually really enjoying the results I've been getting. It's, um, it's nice to just, you know, kind of like not use a preset and just like edit you know based off of like what you're seeing and how you're liking it and then you know obviously if you like it enough then you can create a preset but uh but it's nice it's just uh it's a, just a completely different workflow and i really have been enjoying it um speaking of enjoying things uh i just watched the fuji x summit announcement so i'm really excited to see more on the um, xh2 and the um, the new 56 millimeter 1.2 version 2, which I am probably gonna get first um, after I get my new iPhone because I'm in desperate need of a new phone. Um, but I will be um, doing a video on that when, whenever I pick it up because I have been wanting to get an 85 millimeter again for street photography, but obviously because I shoot Canon, and the original 56 isn't weather sealed by Fuji. I think we'll want to spend money for a full frame lens and then, you know, have to deal with the weight and bigger bags. And obviously, I think we'll feel like investing in the old one because, well, the new one's going to come out. And especially because it's going to be the same price as the old one. Like, it's an, to me, that's, that's very doable. And the X-H2 is pretty, uh, pretty awesome considering it's 40 megapixels. I don't think there's anything... APS-C wise, that's that high res, I think. Sony or Canon had a APS-C camera that was like 32 megapixels, I don't remember. Um, but I also recently just got to play with my friend Miles' um, X-H2S and I'm really impressed with the autofocus on this camera and I feel like that's kind of like the Fuji camera a lot of us have been waiting for that could kind of compare to Sony and Canon's autofocus and it's more like an alternative if you can't afford the um, the full frame prices because full frame is really expensive. I know the bodies have come down in price, but the glass, man, the glass, especially Canon, because Canon did the stupidest thing and basically I think they sent a cease and desist to I think it was Rokinon or Viltrox for making third party glass and they flat out said that they're not gonna allow anybody to use um, the RF mount or I guess reverse engineer it to make third party lenses. Which I was like, Canon, why, dude? You guys have been wanting to get people back on, on on your platform, but your freaking lenses are so expensive. They're amazing. I love my 50 millimeter RF 1.2, but not everyone has two thousand dollars to drop on a 50 millimeter. They want a 1.4. Yeah, you have the 1.8, which is cool, and and the cheaper RF glass isn't like um, crappy like how it used to be. It's actually very, pretty comparable. But, you know, people sometimes want a 1.4 that's weather sealed or they want a 24 to 70 that isn't $2,300, you know. And I think that's where Sony and now Fuji, because I know they have a lot of third party lenses coming out by Tamron and Viltrox, is that I think these platforms are going to really shine the next few years because there's so much option for users. So I, I, I don't know, man. I feel like Canon's a little too conservative with their business approach. Um, 
and uh, don't get me wrong, I love my Canon class. I'm probably not going to switch because I'm heavily invested and I don't want to spend the money to switch to something else like Sony or whatever. Because honestly, there's nothing wrong with my, my Canon cameras. Um, but for somebody that's trying to get into the, into the business, spend that kind of money to buy, let's say, an R6 or an R5 and then like a 24 to 70, uh, 2.8, you know, that's, that's already at least a minimum of like 45 to six thousand dollars if i'm doing the math right yeah something like that so that's why i feel like aps-c right now is kind of the move for a lot of people because like yeah you know the, the xh2 is 2500 bucks it's the same cost of uh an r6 but the lenses are way cheaper and then you can get used lenses as well which will significantly make the cost of entry lower and if you don't want to get any of the 1.4 glass you can always get the one point or sorry the f2 glass uh, so there there's plenty of options available for people but you know when a lot of people say it's like oh APS-C doesn't seem professional it's like well i mean technically i shoot with the c70 for professional video and it's so and yeah like is it not a professional camera i i think that argument's kind of silly because i feel there's so many tools out here now, especially in 2020. There's so many cameras that really, I don't think there's always, there's ever a bad camera. There's people, there's bad users. There's bad people that don't know how to use their equipment. Uh, and then they blame the camera and they're like, oh, I'm going to go buy another one. And then, you know, they buy another one thinking it's going to make them better. And they just don't learn the craft. Um, but, you know, when we think of APS-C, we think of, especially for me, you know, I started on DSLR over 10 years ago. And back then, APS-C was like the budget option. That's what, like what you got into if you couldn't afford full frame. Or you would get something like an 80D or a 60D or like a 7D Mark I or two. You know, that was kind of like an alternative to like the 5D um, and 6D series, but it was cropped. So, you know, full frame was kind of like sacred back then, but I feel like now in 2022, APS-C has really grown up a lot uh both not just necessarily on the fuji side but i know sony's also been coming out with some some awesome stuff as well so it's really matured and i feel like the line or this i guess the sacredness of full frame isn't what it used to be like yeah you'll still get the better low light performance and you know the shallow depth of field if that's what you're into um the uh you know sometimes better autofocus in low light but APS-C has really kind of like encroached on that. So I think really you could go either way. And personally, the whole thing with like, oh, low light performance. Um, for video, yes, 100% I will take a full frame camera any day because I shoot a lot of video. And even the C70 struggles in low light. So that's why I have my R6s as my alternative. But when you're shooting primarily photography, um, if you're not shooting wide open, and you're shooting groups, like let's say on a wedding, you're gonna wanna shoot with the flash because you're gonna be shooting around five, six, six, three. Maybe your shutter speed's like at one over 50 to like one over 80, and then your ISO 640 to like 800, depending on the lighting and like how hot you have the flash. And the reason I say that is because if you're gonna shoot at F2 to like say 1.4 on Fuji or any, um, any full frame, really you're gonna, you're not gonna get everybody in focus if you're shooting a large group. So that's why you're gonna wanna shoot at something like a 5.6 aperture because then you're gonna have more depth and everyone's gonna be nicely focused. Uh, but again, everyone's needs are different. This is me just kinda like rambling and having a perspective on that because I have been working a lot this past summer and I have used a number of cameras over the years. So I kinda feel like I am qualified to kinda talk about this because I feel like nowadays everyone's just so focused on like, oh yeah, bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. But you know, that's not always the case. Um, so yeah, I'm kinda curious to see what you guys think about uh, APS-C versus full frame. Is, it, is full frame still sacred as it used to be? Um, is it not? Do you prefer APS-C in 2022 over full frame? And do you think Canon is very stupid for not allowing uh, third-party lenses or third-party manufacturers on their platform when like Sony and everyone else is doing it? Uh, well, go ahead and comment down below, but that's really all the time I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to do more of these uh, pretty soon. 
uh, especially now that it's starting to kind of cool down and like I said you know I'm gonna be debt free soon so I'll have more free time uh, but yeah um, also are you guys gonna get either the Fuji X-H2S or the X-H2 go ahead let's have a conversation down below keep it friendly because people get so butthurt about cameras nowadays but as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Double tap the like button twice. Trust me, it works. Go ahead and share this video. And as always, hasta luego.